Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repairs. Today we have a special episode. This is probably the most rare and expensive guitar that I've ever covered. So, um, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so this guitar popped up for sale locally and the price on it was very reasonable So I went over had a look tried it out and I took it so The first clue we have is this generation 3 chainsaw case So um, these are considered by many people the best uh, cases ever built by Gibson and they go for a lot of money. So a generation three case can sell, you know, anywhere between five to eight hundred dollars um, just by going past reverb sales. Uh, they're pretty sought after. I think the generation two and one are a little bit more uh, worth a little bit more, more people trying to get them. But the generation threes are also quite sought after. Um, mainly because they have the uh, metal clips that one and two chainsaw cases only have the plastic. But there's a couple other differences. But anyway, these were made um, in the 1980s. So this gives us a little bit of an idea what to expect. So let's go ahead and take a look. Wow, that's a nice top. Okay. So this guitar is a Canadian ex dealer exclusive. It was made for La Tosca Guitars, a music shop in Montreal, for the owner Guy Bersa, which is uh, a French name. That's kind of the French pronunciation. I had to look it up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he made th um, these for three years. There was three 50 guitar runs between 19... Uh, 77 and 1980 so there's hundred and fifty of these guitars in existence and yeah so they're quite rare but um, they're considered to be one of the first dealer exclusive guitars made um, there are a few earlier examples but uh, a lot of people think that this is the first, which is incorrect. Trogli has a really good video on this guitar in particular, um, going through the history of dealer exclusives and double cuts in general. I'll put that link in the description because it's if you're interested in this guitar, it's uh, it's a pretty good video. So, um, yeah. So the specs on this are pretty cool. So this is a double cut body. It's bound, so it's got the binding all the way around it. Uh, it's got that really nice flame maple top. This is um, really nice. So it's got a lot of movement and uh, it's that really deep kind of quilty flame maple top. And uh, this guitar came with P90 pickups, which was kind of uh, rare in the 1980s. Not a lot of guitars had those, especially like really higher end ones. And uh, P90s is kind of going through a resurgence in popularity. They're great pickups and aged ones sound particularly fantastic. So I'm excited to plug this in. It's got uh, sustain, sustain Sisters. So I'll put a little graphic up on the screen here. So a regular um, bridge posts um, are look like this. And Sustain Sisters bridge posts look like this. So they're deeper and they're made of brass. So... The idea here was that uh, you'd get more sustain with the sustain sister system. And uh, whether or not that's true, I'm, I'm not really sure. But we'll check it out and see how it works on this guitar. And then it's got the TP6 Gibson tailpiece, which is neat. So this tailpiece just makes it very easy to change strings. The strings just go in these little grooves here. Um, I think there's a famous video of B.B. King changing his strings on stage while he's playing or one string and uh, he had a TP6 system so all you have to do is hook it and run it through and uh, it's just pretty easy and simple to change strings. You've also got these fine tuners at the back so once you're in tune 
and you just want to do little tiny adjustments you can just actually adjust back here just like a Floyd row is kind of a style and then we've got our three-way pickup selector and our speed knobs the knobs have like a really nice age to them so when they age they kind of get that amber hue so yeah very nice looking kind of aged looking knobs and then we've got our very nice ebony fretboard um, this is bound as well. This one has fret nibs and they're still there. It looks like some fret work may have been done on this guitar, um, but uh, it's still retaining the nibs. So that's good. Sometimes when you get fret work done on Gibsons, uh, they'll totally get rid of the nibs when they do the work because it requires a little bit of extra time just to uh, not remove the nibs with tools and stuff like that. So a lot of the times uh, Gibsons that have fret work on it won't have the nibs. But if your repair tech was very careful, um, you can get the work done and retain the nibs. So this one still has the nibs. So that, this is just a really nice dark ebony fingerboard. And it's got uh, real mother of pearl inlay, which is nice. Um, you can tell it's real mother of pearl, just the way it kind of shines in the sun. There's a good example there. I don't know if it'll come up on camera, but they have this kind of iridescent kind of uh, sheen. And they glow like in multicolors. So, this guitar also has been recently set up by a, a very well known guitar shop in Edmonton, Stain Guitars. They have like a really, really good tech, and he looked after this. I think there was a fret level done and a recrown and a polish. It, it plays great with really low action. And uh, yeah, so if you look past the strings, there's, there's no fret wear, but I think that's just because it had the. Uh, the crown and polish but <clears throat> there's still lots of frets left i would say there's like 80 percent or more um so yeah lots of life left in the frets and those look like medium jumbo frets and then we can see <clears throat> our exclusive truss rod cover so it says la tosca exclusive guy brassard our brassard and our old school mother of pearl gibson inlay with uh the big headstock that they were doing at this time. So it kind of looks like a big paddle. And then uh, I'll flip it over here. So <clears throat> one piece mahogany body, which is nice because this is a bigger, you know, shape for a guitar, the double cut. So they had to use a really big slab of mahogany for this. And it is one piece and it's got some really nice grain in the back as well. We've got a little bit of buckle worming here. As far as shape goes, this guitar is in very, very nice shape. Um, there's a few small superficial marks and dings. I think that's being one of the worst ones here. Um, but mostly all just nothing through the finish, um, just kind of handling marks and dings over the 45 years. And uh, yeah, really nice piece of mahogany in the back, one piece. And um, We've got our two different locations for our straps. Um, <clears throat> I looked this up. I'm not sure if this was factory, like how they came or how they were ordered or someone did it because um, they liked the location here better. Uh, but there's multiple examples I've seen of this rare guitar with that has the multiple uh, strap lock locations or the strap peg locations. So I'm not sure if uh, that was a spec on this year that it was ordered. And this is a 1980, by the way. Um, or if uh, the people who bought these just routinely put those strap pegs there. So anyway, it's the same, it's the same uh, style of peg too. So they, I'm not sure, it might've came factory like that. And then these models also had a maple neck. So this is a multi-piece maple neck. So maple necks are nice because they're very stable and strong. And uh, you know, you typically have to adjust them less than a mahogany neck because the wood's harder and uh, they typically last like forever with no warping or twisting of the neck either so they're just a very sturdy neck and there's a, actually some really nice flame in this neck as well so it's pretty beautiful and then on the headstock here we see our giant volute so a lot of the 70s 80s guitars in the Norlin era had this really nice volute 
Um, what's great about this volute is like this is typically the area area where the uh, headstock breaks if there's a if it falls or if uh, falls over if there's damage. So this volute really reinforces the neck in a very good spot. And um, yeah, it's something that a lot of people want Gibson to bring back on all of their models just because it provides that extra protection. And then we've got our old school Gibson tuners. So these are original as well for the guitar. And uh, we can see Made in USA, we've got our serial number here. Our serial number dates it to 1980. And the last part of the serial number, I'm assuming, is the run, how, like what uh, run of this guitar it is. So it says 028. So there's 50 made a year, so this is 28 of 50. And there's also a second stamped into this guitar. So what that means is when it came from the factory, there might have been a small blemish or something like that. Um, so the factory would mark it second and then they would typically charge a little bit less for this when they were selling it um, because of a flaw. So now that the guitar is 45 years old and we've got little dings and stuff everywhere on it, it's really hard to determine what the flaw might be. It might have been just a little ding in the finish and that's why it was marked a second. But we don't know what's original from the factory or what kind of happened over the years. But regardless, this guitar is in very, very clean shape. It was very well taken care of. And uh, here's our pick guard, and there's still plastic on the pick guard, so that's kind of neat. Usually, I just peel off any plastic that's on anything, but uh, on this example, I think I will leave it and uh, let the next owner decide what they want to do with it. Because um, as nice as this guitar is, and as nicely as it plays, I, uh, I'm gonna have to sell this one because uh, I got some other ideas of guitars I want to buy. And uh, I just wanted to get this one and document it before it moves on. So, another thing I wanted to talk about was the nut. So the nut, in a lot of 80s era guitars, they had a brass nut. And uh, they're typically not done anymore. Uh, brass was just big in the 80s. Everybody thought it really helped with the sustain. Um, which is why this guitar has the brass nut and the sustained sisters. So uh, it's actually been proven that brass does help with sustain. Uh, I just don't think it's done very often anymore because brass is pretty expensive, especially as a nut um, to machine. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot more expensive to put a brass nut on a guitar. But um, yeah, they're very nice. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the bench and take it apart and we can have a look at uh, what makes it tick. So let's go ahead and do that. So I thought this guitar was gonna be a lot heavier than this because uh, it's an unchambered, unweight relieved, big chunk of mahogany guitar, but it's only coming in at eight pounds, 12.6 ounces. So yeah, very reasonable weight. So the width of the nut is a 1.69 and at the 12th fret a 2.049 neck depth at the first fret is a 0.879 and at the 12th a 0.889 all right here's a look at the neck profile so yeah it starts off pretty rounded c and then it flattens out just a little bit by the 12th fret but it's a pretty standard uh, C profile. It feels pretty chunky. This is definitely like a rounded C neck, kind of more closer to their 50s neck profile. All right, we'll get some pickup readings. So on our bridge pickup, it's reading an 8.01. On our neck pickup, a 9 or 7.92. And in the middle, a 3.98. It's got a standard 24 and 3 quarters inch scale. It's got a standard 12 inch neck radius and a about a 16 degree headstock pitch. All right, we're gonna check this guitar out under black light because uh, with a black light you can see any areas in the finish that are not glowing properly. So what happens to these nitro finishes when they age is they start to glow. So if you don't see a uniform glow, you know that part of the finish has been touched up or repaired or refinished, that kind of a thing. 
Um, and then you can also see, you know, if there's any stand, rash, or anything else like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and go over each part of the guitar with the black light so we can see. I don't have enough big enough one to do it all at once, but you can kind of see. See, really look how those knobs are glowing. Um, that really tells you that they're original. Because uh, as they age, they glow more and more. And the rest of the guitar is glowing quite nicely too. And we can see that there's no spots that aren't glowing uniformly, so that's great. And then uh, let's just check out our headstock here. So yeah, that's all glowing nicely too. No issues anywhere. Looks like it's never been resprayed or anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the guitar over. And uh, yeah, everything is looking like it should. There's no signs of a repair or overspray or a refinish. So that's great. You can see a couple dings in the uh, light there. Move on to our neck. That all looks good. You can see there's a little bit of finish wear on the volute there. It's like a little bit of a line, but yeah, no cracks, repairs, no uh, oversprays, no anything. It looks very nice and clean and uh, yeah, we can tell it's all original and nothing's been repaired or sprayed on it. All right, here's a look at our bridge. So we can see that it's made in Germany, which is original for the parts at the time. So the bridge is nice and original. And then, here, let's just take these out. So here's a look how the strings go into the teepee tailpiece. There's just a little slot in the back and then they just Go ahead and go right in there. So they're very easy to restring. And then the fine tuners you can tune at the back. So here it is. And uh, we can see it's Gibson branded, made in USA. All right, here's a look at our pickup cavities. So you can see that they're, um, the pickups are held in place by these little blocks of foam here. That gives you the tension to adjust your pickup height. And then there's a little plate in the bottom where it attaches to the body. And that's where your screws screw in from the top. And uh, here's the pickups. So these 70s ones had the nice clear plastics and the red wire. So these can break. Uh, they're pretty sensitive. Um, so if you don't have one that's in very good condition, you might see some cracks or breaks. But this one is like new. It looks like mint. And uh, here's what the backs look, look like. They're just gold with two uh, screws there. And then the screws for the mounts. And uh, yeah, there's a nice clean example as well. So yeah, everything looks great. All right, let's just take a look at our neck and our headstock. So very clean headstock, no scratches or dings, like a, some slight finished scuffing, but uh, very clean. Um, there's our truss rod, and uh, yeah, it looks like it's in really good shape, not maxed out or anything, no thread showing, lots of room for adjustment. And then our ebony fretboard is looking very nice and dark with our mother of pearl inlays. Again, I think this was just fret leveled and recrowned, so the frets are super shiny and smooth and no signs of wear. And then as far as the guitar goes, excellent shape as well. You, if you hold in the light, you can see some minor like picking marks and some scuffs, but overall, very clean. Very minor marks or dings anywhere. Just a really nice example. And uh, I did notice, I don't know if it can come up on camera here, but there's a little bit of a finish check right there. And it's just in the finish, it doesn't go through to the wood, so it's not much, but it's worth mentioning. All right, here's a look at our electronics cavity. So yeah, everything looks original. Nothing's been altered. You can really tell by the, the solder points that nobody's been in there messing with anything. Um, and yeah, we've got our big disc capacitors 
here and uh, we can tell by the pot codes that these are a lot of these codes are for 78 so that makes sense that this is an 80 they kind of have parts um, laying around so a couple years ago and uh, yeah everything looks nice and original nice route here uh, let's have a look at the condition on the back and the back's in really nice condition as well there's our very good looking one piece mahogany back you can tell there's no seam lines anywhere and it's just nice grain throughout there's a tiny bit of buckle worming try to catch that in the light here so it's not through the finish by any means so it's not rash so just a little bit of impressions so that's called worming but uh, overall very nice there's a couple little dings right there and of course that bigger ding right here a little bit on the horn there but uh, pretty minor all things considered there's a look at our two different peg locations we got one on the back and one on the horn um, so yeah whatever is more comfortable for you you can kind of try both and see which location you like the best and uh, here's our unblemished neck there's no marks or dings anywhere on the neck none that you can feel at all and uh, it does have some nice flame in the maple too which is nice and then we can see our original machine heads gibson branded and as well as our serial number and uh, the second branding on there and here's our original pick guard and it's still got the plastic on there usually I take plastic off anything that I get but I'm gonna be selling this guitar so I'm gonna leave it as is and let the new owner decide what they want to do with that but it's cool to see that uh, the plastic's still on there after all these years alright so when I bought this guitar it had just gotten back from a fresh setup so this was set up at Stain Guitars in Edmonton uh, they have a fantastic tech there. His name's Doc, and um, yeah, he's just one of he's world class. He's uh, he's an excellent, excellent luthier in tech. And uh, so, shout out to Doc at Staying. I've had a, a couple guitars that I brought to him um, just to uh, get some stuff done that I maybe didn't have tools for at the time or anything else like that. But uh, he's always done outstanding work. So, yeah, if you're in the Edmonton area and you have a guitar that needs fixing, high end stuff. Bring it to Doc at Staying. Or, or you could bring it to me. Because um, I do all that stuff too. But anyway, here is the relief in the neck. As you can see, there's just a little bit of relief in the neck. And um, still pretty straight, all things considered. That's just pretty standard neck relief there. And uh, in action or not you can see when I use the third fret you can see the strings just resting almost lightly on the first fret so yeah nice straight neck and uh, the nut is cut quite well and we've got nice low action so on the 12th fret we can see our actions about a 1.5 at the low E and at the high E we're sitting at just over one, very close to one. So that's right where I like to set my guitars. Um, so that's perfect for me, uh, nice low action and uh, there's no buzz anywhere, which I'll show now. All right, we're just gonna run through the frets to show there's no buzzing anywhere.
All right, so not only is there no fretting out anywhere, there's no hint of buzz even. And uh, with that um, action that low, I, I could go lower easily because uh, there's no hint of buzz or fretting out. So yeah, that's outstanding. Um, really nice playing guitar and uh, you can get the action as low as you want with, uh, with uh, the frets like that. So that means the frets are extremely level and uh, you can get that action down nice and low. So not only does this guitar look fantastic, it's in great shape, but it plays great too. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see how that sounds. Before we plug in, I just wanna go over the case quickly. Again, this is a generation three chainsaw case. It's in very nice condition as well. Uh, a lot of the times this will be missing from the gen three because this will pop off and get lost. But uh, yeah, this one's still good. And we've got all of our latches in good condition and working well and then when we open it up we've got our nice plush brown interior and it's not uh, dirty or broken anywhere um, there's a little bit of sagging here by the headstock where the adhe um, adhesive has come up off a little bit but we just fold it back up it's in good it works well and then uh, here's our compartment. It's got the Gibson branding on there. And we still got the original silica packet. So this is where you can put your strings and picks and tuners and what have you. But yeah, these cases are great. They're great for shipping because they're so um, uh, robust and uh, sturdy. So there's no chance in stuff getting wrecked when you ship it in one of these. So a lot of people consider these the greatest guitar cases ever made by Gibson. So, and they go for a premium. They, they can sell for five to $800 for the case alone. So that's crazy. So I just want to show this showcase the uh, condition. It's in very good condition. There's a little bit of sagging up by the headstock, but overall it's, uh, it's great. All right, I'm plugged in to the one true kig rig. Yeah, so for those who watch 60 Cycle Hum, that's a blatant ripoff of the Princeton rig. Um, so yeah, I got my hamp set at four and a half, my triples at four and a half, my bass is at four and a half, my reverb's at two and a half. I'm using the Carl's speaker so continuator, and we're using an SM57 to mic up the speaker here. And uh, we're just gonna run through some clean tones and some dirty. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm gonna start off on the bridge pickup here and uh, just do some finger picking.
Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit of strumming now, so bridge pickup to start. sound they sound great um, yeah pretty blown away by the sound I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw on some dirt now and we'll start off in the bridge position Yeah, wow, these P90s sound great with a little bit of overdrive, uh, just fantastic in every position. I really like the bridge though, it really has that nice snarl and like mid-driven and uh, really, really aggressive kind of P90 sound, like a proper vintage P90, so sounds great. I'm going to apply a little bit more in that position. guitar is really nice like definition and clarity so even with overdriven I can play it like finger pick style and you can hear each individual notes like ringing through normally um, when you play distorted if you try to do those uh, like finger picking style it all just kind of muddies together but this has great articulation and distinction between the notes you can really hear everything I'll show you what I mean
right, so final thoughts on the 1980 La Tosca exclusive double cut. Uh, it's, yeah, I've played a lot of great guitars lately. And, uh, well, this one stands alone. Top of the heap. It's amazing. It's, uh, it's gorgeous. It's really got that really nice quilted flame maple top that looks just great. Um, it's got that TP6 tail piece that works awesome. It's great for changing strings and plus you can do your fine tuning. Um, that really nice dark ebony fingerboard. Um, those really nice looking mother of pearl inlays. Still got the nibs on here. And the fretwork on this guitar is amazing. You can play nice and low. Um, super level, no hint of buzz anywhere. Uh, the brass nut to help with sustain and uh, just less maintenance. It's less likely to chip or, you know, deepen the, the grooves or stuff like that. So the brass nuts are great. We've got our Guy Brassa uh, truss cover, the La Tosca exclusive truss cover there. And uh, our big 80s style headstock with the mother of pearl Gibson inlay that still looks great. Um, the pickup sound, fantastic. Wow, there's something about vintage P90s and yeah, these sound great. Just the articulation in the notes, even with distortion is awesome. You can hear everything, it's just super responsive and uh, sounds great, you know, with uh, clean or with distortion. And uh, yeah, one piece mahogany body it's still nice and light, under nine pounds. I mean, for a, a Norlin era one piece mahogany body guitar, usually they're like 10 pounds, even be plus 12 pounds. For this to be under nine pounds is pretty awesome, especially considering it's not weight reliefed. Um, so yeah, very nice that it's it's so light. Uh, and these got the nice volute there um, with the three piece flame maple neck. It's got some really nice flame on there as well. Um, with the original Gibson tuners and uh, yeah it just plays and sounds great what a, what a treat to play this guitar and unfortunately I can't keep this one just not in the cards for me at the moment but uh, if you're interested in becoming the next owner I'm gonna have the reverb link in the description and I, I don't think you'll be disappointed this is a fantastic guitar Um, the brass nut combined with the sustained sister bridge posts, um, yeah, it seems to have amazing sustain as well. So yeah, just uh, just a next level guitar, just uh, 10 out of 10, <laughs> or close anyway. The closest I've seen to a 10 out of 10. But uh, anyway, yeah, thanks for stepping in or stopping in today. This is going to be. Uh, it for this video. I've got more coming really soon. I've got a bunch of backed up content that I need to get out uh, when I find some time, but I'll have more for you really soon. So thanks for tuning in to Beckley Guitars and Repairs. This is a, a special guitar, and if you wanna if you wanna own it, check out the reverb link. Alright, thanks a lot. I hope you have a great day.